What's up everybody, welcome back to my laboratory where safety is number one priority. Fire extinguisher close by, kids do not try this at home. So as you can see I got flint right here, I'm gonna heat it up with the lighter and throw it on the ground and let's see what happens. First I'm gonna heat it up till the flint is red and then throw it on the ground. See how it turned red, now I'm gonna throw it on the ground and see what happens. So if you're gonna smack this one, it did not break of course. Simply because we don't have leverage on this bag. If we're gonna hit it here, it's just simply gonna fly that way. But what if you're gonna grab a piece of paper and put it over here, piece of paper over here. Of course that does not break. So let's try another piece of paper, put it like that and flood it out as much as we can. We're gonna need a jar, one of these, like you know where they sell water, I think it's 10 liters or something like that. And 91% is a propyl alcohol. Let's check it out. We're gonna grab alcohol and pour a little bit in there. Not too much. Next thing we're gonna do is close the hole with our hand and kind of put alcohol all over the bottle. Can I turn it and shake it, you know? So, alcohol will be everywhere. Then we're gonna light it. How cool was that, huh? How cool was that? Let's try it in total darkness. And then we're gonna heat it really hard over here. And guess what? It breaks. But you're going to ask, we did not have anything heavy over here. And this is just air. So we're breaking this wood without heavy stuff, but with a lot of air force. Because it have to be lift up and a lot of air have to get sucked in too fast. So this force between this force is greater. So it breaks instead of lifting the whole thing up. Because even though it's super light, a lot of air have to come in at once, it makes it a lot heavier. Here we're going to need matches, scissors and a bottle of water. Let's get to our experiment. First thing we're going to do is grab a few matches and then cut the heads off. Just like that. Next what we're going to do is grab an empty plastic bottle and fill it up with water. Then we're going to put the head matches inside of the bottle with water. Just like that. You see they just float in there. Then we're going to cup the bottle pretty tight and you see those matches floating in there. And then we're gonna squeeze the bottle as hard as we can. And guess what? The head matches going to sink. And if we stop squeezing it, we're gonna lift back up. You see, one is going down. Let's see if I can squeeze it harder and get some more than one. There's one, there's two. Ugh. You gotta squeeze pretty hard sometimes. So let's check out how I actually do it. So the head matches over there, then we're gonna grab the bottle and squeeze as hard as we can. As you can see, the match is gonna sink. And if I let go, they're gonna go back up. Isn't it magic? So, let's check it out. Keep squeezing and then they're gonna go all the way bottom. Look, the third one going. The more pressure you're gonna put, the more match is gonna go down. Pretty cool, huh? It's like magic, you know? All I have to do is squeeze and they're gonna sink in. I let go, squeeze again, they stop. To put two bottles like that or one bottle and then we're gonna put measuring stick or some kind of stick 
on top of, of the bottles. Then we're gonna get two magnets. You see normal magnets and check these coins. American coins don't stick, you see? But the British coin, this is two pennies, this is one penny. You see, they actually stick. So for this experiment, we're going to need British coins. Then we're gonna put two magnets like that. And I got the phone book just to raise up my glass because I need perfect uh, measurements from the magnet to the glass. And let's see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stick the coin like that first. Small one, then bigger one, then small one, then bigger one. It's actually don't matter. And check this out. You see, it makes sense, you know. The magnet magnetizes the coin, so this coin connects to this coin because they all magnetize. That's why they all connect to each other. And let's check it out. If I grab them and let go, they stick back together again. You see what I'm saying? That's simple, right? That's everybody knows it. If you put it on a magnet, it's just gonna stay there on top of a magnet. So if I try to let go, they magnetize. But what if I put a glass over here and bring it back down and set it on a glass? So why is it staying like that? Why it's not magnetizing back to the magnet? Why it's not jumping back to the magnet? Why is it just hanging there? Like there's like magnetic field where it just doesn't have to touch to the magnet and at the same time not falling. How is it possible? It looks like it's levitating. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't it look like levitating? So again, magnetizing the coins. So putting the coins to the magnet, that makes sense, very simple. But this is, is kind of magi magical, doesn't make sense. Why is it just levitating there? Let me grab some kind of pencil and move it to, so you guys know. I have this magnifying glass and if I move to right here, you see, there is nothing there. Nothing there at all. Boom, and boom, but you know, let's, let's see it again. So all you have to do is grab it by this thing all the way inside and put your elbow down this way and you just like go that way and drop your shot.